These are my running skills. You ready? I don't want that falling. I'm scared to shit. If that falls and breaks my camera, I'm gonna be in serious trouble. But we gotta do it for the content, right? Do it for the content, boy, yeah? You ready? I don't even know if you fucking saw that. Things you do on your D-load. I'm meant to be D-loading, George, not fucking running. I don't know which way direction to go. The sky looks pretty, though. I used to go to school in this area here. Um, I don't, you, you cannot see that at all, and you won't be able to see it on the wide lens, but basically, two of my schools are there, so I went to a, this is such dead talk, yeah, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but in Bedfordshire, there's, I went to three different schools, I went to lower, middle, upper, normally, most schools are like secondary school, I don't know what they call it, I actually don't even know, and one of my schools over there, I don't know if you can see that in distance, you probably can't, let me zoom into this bad boy, I don't know if you can see all like the JCBs and all like the lights going on pretty much in that direction over there, they're knocking down or demolishing my old school which is really sad actually to think about it because i've had so many memories there and one day i actually wanted to uh because the school closed down about five years ago now and i wanted to break into this the school and just like walk around it because it was just abandoned they just left it there fucking grass overgrown like this and i thought right why not break into it and actually uh like just tour and make a youtube video out of it it's probably really really illegal and i actually didn't do it in the end but yeah, it's quite sad. Like I'm looking at it right now and I just see flat land. I don't see anything. It brings back so many memories because I used to have such fun at that school. Like that was probably my favorite school I ever went to. And now just seeing it crushed and fucking buried and nothing left of it. Even when I left the school, I don't know if I still had it by the time it closed. I had the record for hundred meters back in the day. I used to be very good at hundred meters. My, my best ever record, 11.8 or something like that. I was actually a very good runner, a very good sprinter, and I held the record. Now I can't fucking run 100 yards. I'd be absolutely cream crackered. So it's just how things change. I'm not a good runner at all. Like I might actually, can I put the camera down here and run? I used to hold the record in my school for 100 meters. 11 point, it was 11.7 or 11.9. It was in the 11s, that's all I've got to say. I used to run for my, my school in the county and nationals back in the day. Georgie boy used to do that. Now he's fucked. I did start beefing me, fucking hell dog. All right, you're gonna rip my jacket. Oi. Ah, ah. Diesel, that's fuck, Diesel. <laughs> fucking bastard, shit. All right, fucking hell. Oh. All right, mate, oh, fucking hell. Oh. <laughs> Diesel, I'm fucking choking, boy. <laughs> Let's go. Ah, 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 ah. You're taking the piss, boy. Sit the rascal clerk down now. Sit your ass down and let go. Let go. Man, if you've ripped my jacket, which... Did you rip the jacket? Is that ripped? I can't even fucking see it. Oh dear, need to rip my jacket, bastard. I think he has. Oh, fucked. Oh, sorry about that. One minute, let me just eat this for a second. I'm actually fucked. <sighs> This is how much I was a fucking tramp in school. First day of school, probably year five or six, I got in trouble. And I was walking up the stairs, spat down the stairs, went, and it landed on some girl's head. And the teacher was fucking behind me, weren't it? I didn't realise, and uh, I got in trouble for that. That was the first day of being in middle school. Could you imagine? I was shitting myself. Although I used to be a little shit. Last day of school, went into the art gallery room, and we went into the cupboards. And you know, everyone's got a like, clay room, me and my mate. And we opened the cupboard where people used to leave their work and dry. Because obviously clay used to have to dry and mould it. I don't know. I'm acting like I know what I'm talking about. I ain't got a clue. Anyway, the story. I went in there, me and my mate. And we just fucking smashed all the pots up. Everyone's clay work. It was GCSE. It was sixth formers work. It was fucking A-level work. Whatever it was. We was fucking smashing it. And uh, we never got caught. So uh, what are you going to fucking do now? Ten years on, what are you going to do? You could do fucking nothing, mate. I was uh, I was a little shit back in school. Just beat up all the fucking clay stuff. Just like, have that, you can't have that. Fucking have that, you little sigh. Looking back now, dickhead. But when you're like 15, 14, it's fucking great. 
it's fucking great, but when you're younger, you can get away with it. There's no way in hell I'm going into a clay room right now. Fuck it, it's someone's work. I'm fucking whacking like that. That's never gonna happen. Good days, man. Good times at that school, I tell you. Spitting on people's head, which is fucking disgusting, by the way, if you spit at people. But back then, I was fucking nuts. And I uh, used to play out. I remember that back in the day. Play out in your full kit. Used to go out in my fucking Chelsea kit. Now, if I see someone who's like above the age of like 16 and they go out in their fucking kit, I think you fucking little twat. Even some of the kids that go out in their Astros. Remember back in the day, you used to wear AstroTurfs out. She AstroTurf and jeans. Wear your total 90s with your flared jeans at the bottom, looking like a right virgin. It's mad how things change, isn't it? Back in the day, that back in the fucking day. Look at me, I'm 24, I'm acting like I'm fucking. 55. I also remember in uh, in my upper school, so this was what, year 9 to like year 11. I was in year 10 at the time and I used to actually get bullied by the year above. I don't know why they had a, a massive problem with me. I ain't gonna bullshit you, I was quite popular in school. I was quite a bit of a cocky twat. I was like, yeah, look at me, I'm big bollocks. Like, I was ahead of the people in my year. I hit puberty at a very young age. Like, I started growing a beard when I was like 15 quite easily. I was a lot taller than everyone else. But imagine me being the tallest in my football team. I was the tallest. Like, I don't get how that actually worked. I remember me and my mates back in the day, we used to show off our pubes. Look how many fucking pubes I've got. Now I literally couldn't give a flying fuck about how many pubes I've got. I'd just shave it off. I'd rather no hair than have hair at all. Yeah, back to what I was saying, I was, I was quite popular. I was ahead of my, my year in terms of like personality, maturity. And I don't think the year above used to like that. So believe it or not, I used to get quite. I used to get bullied back when I was about 15 at the time, yeah, but nearly 10 years ago now, to the point where teachers used to have to give me a lift home because they were worried about me getting beaten up and people waiting for me on their bikes after school. It got quite bad and I was in quite a low spot actually, I must admit. When it came to the final day of the year, I was in year 10, obviously the year 11s had their final day. They came in with fucking bleach bombs, didn't they? They come in with balloons filled up with bleach and the school advised me, they told me, do not come in on that day because you're gonna get bullied, you're gonna get beaten up. I didn't actually go into school that day, I bunked off because the school told me to bunk off. The next following year we came in, final year of school, I remember some fucking idiot getting knocked out with some knuckle dust this man got fucking walloped. I remember watching it in front of my eyes. Keeping in mind, I'm from like the Luton Dunstable area. It's not the most pleasant area in the whole entire world. So people do this normal stuff, like coming on bikes, fucking knuckle dusters, knives, all that sort of shit. Came in once, just see this fucking bloke get whacked with knuckle dusters. I was like, what the fuck is going on there? You know, when you witness something like that, like it's all jokey when you when you hear about it, but when you actually witness it, your heart like sinks and you just see someone drop to the floor like they're fucking dead knocked out it's it's quite an uncomfortable experience yeah those days were the best days man it's got me remembering um just out of my my walk with diesel this evening i'm deloading so i've got a little bit more time on my hands it's quite weird how when you don't train it's like i've got nothing going on in my life like <laughs> literally my life revolves around training and it's quite sad that when you don't train it's like well what the fuck do i do feel a bit lost but yeah good times back in school i've got so many stories i could go on about I'm not sure if they're suitable for YouTube or whether I'll get banned or fucking hate on them. So I was playing with Diesel yesterday and the guy nutted me in the side of the eye. And oh, when I tell you my eye this morning is killing me. Like, I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to look. Look at the fucking bruising that guy's left on me. It looks like I've got mascara on. You know when the girls do the flicks on their eyes? It looks like that. I look awful. I look like I've been in a fight. What I really should have came on here and said, I had a fight last night, the geezer whacked me around the head so I just knocked the cunt out. That's what I should have said to you guys, but obviously we keep it real around here. I didn't, I ain't gonna fight, am I? I just chained the man instead. Yeah, that doesn't look good. I look quite incriminating, but I do look hard though at the same time, like just who's gonna fuck with me? Who's gonna fuck me with a bruise, bruised eye? What did he get up to you last night? He had a fucking fight, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, you fucking want it, you fucking have it. Come on, fuck it, yeah. Man even weren't ready for it. <laughs> I can't actually do that, that's fucked. Don't, because I'm gonna, I know what's gonna happen, I'm gonna pull a muscle. I know that's gonna happen. But yeah, don't mess with me because that's what happens. We're fucking back. Four day deload, boy. 
We're back to the fucking gym. Come on, Jody boy. Let's go, son. Most of my tools are doctors. Opening buddies, call the surgeons. Bro, dip that till he lost his function. Hospital settings, close them curtains. Somewhere else with gang, I'm lurking. Break from the band, though. Tryna catch a case here. My doctors, opening buddies, call the surgeons. Bro, dip that till he lost his function. It's a world that we live in. Guns, money, drugs. I just didn't go back home, then bill him. Have you ever smoked in a dead man? Right, so I've just sat down and I've remembered I've left my headphones at home. And I was thinking, don't worry, the gym plays really, really good music, so I'll be fine. Then it hit reality. Oh, fuck. Jess, you might have to put on the playlist for me. You know the music I listen to? You might have to put that on for me. Or ask. I can't listen to this. You know I can't listen to this. <laughs> I've got deadlifts, so I need to listen to some fucking good music because I'm absolutely gonna kick off. Oh, I'm a bit pissed off now. <laughs> you know there was, headphones are life. But like for me, even just having headphones in my ear, because they're soundproof and they block out the music, which is fine. So I need to, I need something. I need something to motivate me because that is not that I need motivation, but it's better to have something you like listening to and doing deadlifts, right? Not fucking some shit that they play here. Anyway, show goes on. This is my second session back after I took four days off. So I spoke to AJ last week. He told me to take Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday off. Back in it on Sunday. It was a good session. I, I didn't record it because I was just too focused on wanting to get back into it, if I'm honest. Which I probably should have done, but the show goes on anyway. In for deadlifts today. I think the last video you saw was deadlifts, so I do apologise. I'm going to try and make sure that you're seeing more than just deadlifting but at the end of the day I want to show you just what I'm doing right now and just keep it real and sometimes it is the same old sort of shit you see the same sort of training setup you see the same full days of eating but like I've always said that is a part of the journey that's a part of what I'm doing right now that's if anything that's what I want to promote like, unfortunately sometimes you have to do the same old shit all the time to get to your goal so that's something that I'm not really bothered about at the moment I have been bothered about the past and people do moan in the comments you're doing this you're doing that fuck off then innit just fuck off or your mum is gonna get slapped. Your mum's not gonna get slapped. Maybe your dog will get slapped. Or your sister. Or maybe if your sister's keen on the Georgie boy, who knows what happened. <laughs> what I usually say with coming back from a deload, my advice on D volumes or coming back from a deload, whatever it may be, is you could potentially run a lower volume threshold just because obviously you're taking four or five days off, maybe a week off and your recovery demands aren't there yet, so it makes sense to maybe just ease your way back into it with lesser volume. You could maybe keep a one rep in reserve, that sort of stuff. I don't do that shit, that's not for me. I'd rather do the lower volume than keep the reps in reserve myself. But for me, like I know my body quite well, I know how it responds after a deload, so what I usually do is I go back a week in terms of lob numbers and I just climb from there. So if I look back at what I was doing maybe a week and a half ago, I'll go back to those numbers and try and match them or beat them but just solidify the form because sometimes trying to go back to where you was before after you've taken four to, to seven days off your body goes into a state of like it's detrained itself so sometimes you may notice when you've taken some time off feel just feels off the moon pattern feels weird and your body's trying to relearn it like don't stress yourself out over that sometimes it's worth taking a step backwards resetting some movements that you felt like needed needed resetting or maybe just actually running a lower, lower volume like I said so yeah got deadlifts on the cards Starting off with lion hamstring curl, stiff leg, assisted pull-ups, dumbbell pull-over, pull-down, chest supported prime row. As always, really looking forward to it. And you've seen in my recent videos the progress in my back and how much I've, I've made a difference to my back over the past two years. Same rules apply. Same rules apply. I've got a tight rear delt at the moment. That is, I can feel my lat is a little bit tight, like right in where it inserts here. So that's a bit annoying. But I'm just going to make sure I warm up, get the band going, make sure I get some, some blood into the lats, and then obviously from there, hopefully it won't irritate me doing stiff legs or pull downs or anything like that. Touch wood. Touch wood. Anyway, let's fucking get into this, Georgie boy. Enough waffling. It's time to fuck shit up. It's time to be a better version of myself. I've got December, January, February, maybe March. So that's maybe four months probably less than that, probably I'd say about three, maybe three and a half months to make sure that I'm in the best position possible, ready for my 2022 prep, and I'm fucking excited. So I'm chasing that 200 kilo down, and I'll get that, trust me. I, try, I put my life on it, I'll get 200 kilos by the end of this off season, for a decent six reps. So that's coming. Anyway, fucking let's get into it, Georgie boy, enough of your shit. I'm really sorry I haven't been able to keep up with my uploads over the past four or five days or so. Business has actually been really, really good, surprisingly. I've had a lot of inquiries about coaching. 
I've been setting up new clients as well, which has been amazing. And I'll, I'll be totally honest here, you know, this channel is all about honesty and transparency. Like YouTube doesn't earn me a lot of money. It really doesn't. As much as I would love to do this every single day, like I'll be honest, I probably make about $400, $500 a month from it, which is, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Really happy about that. The fact that I even make a penny from it is amazing. But in reality, I make a lot more money from my coaching business and that is where I need to put more of my effort. And I've noticed that a little bit lately that I'm putting a lot of effort into my YouTube, don't get me wrong. I put a lot of effort always with my clients. My clients are always a massive priority for me and always will be. But at the end of the day, like I need to sometimes tell myself, look, you know, when business is picking up, that's where I'm earning the most. That's where my income comes from. Sometimes I need to put things that aren't necessarily making me as much money because I don't know if anyone understands but YouTube is quite time consuming like editing filming that sort of stuff it does take a little bit of time um so yeah I do apologize about that I don't I know I don't need to just uh, justify myself but I always like to kind of tell you what's what and, and be honest about it so yeah another deadlift session apologies one thing I just wanted to show you here was just like look at me I, I look like a bit of a dickhead nodding my head listening to music but the mindset going into deadlifts, especially a big compound movement like this, like you've got to be like switched on. You've got to be really, really focused because, you know, I'm heading into the unknown territory with my deadlifts, even though it's it's baby weight for most people. It really is. You know, um, this week I pulled 180 for a set of seven, which is an all time PB on what I, I still call stiff leg. Um, I would say this was a little bit messy this week coming back from a deload, but I'm still improving upon it. And I will definitely next time make sure that my, my form is, is better just by tidying it up a little bit. Um, I noticed that my eccentrics were a little bit off and I noticed that my hips were dropping a little bit, but I will still class that as a stiff leg in my opinion. Um, my legs are still relatively straight. Um, anyway, yeah, show goes on. So yeah, I pulled 180 for a set of seven, Still using the deadlift bar. I really like the deadlift bar. It took me some time getting used to, but now I'm into the groove of it. I think I'm absolutely loving it. The belt, I still like using the belt. I must admit, like I'm still a little bit apprehensive with my lower back at times, but the belt is great for me just to focus on my breathing, my breathing patterns and just focusing on actually bracing against the belt. So I don't really, I always used to be in the past, you know, belt, fuck this, fuck that. People use belts. What's the purpose of that? You're defeating the objective of using it. But I've seen really good benefits and results from using a belt at the moment. Obviously, then move on to the accessory work. So one thing I noted down here on my assisted pull-ups was my back offset was just a little sloppy. So one thing I noticed um, on the higher rep, sort of 11 to 14 rep range that I'm currently doing on the back offset, the last couple of reps were a little bit dodgy. So sometimes you just need to be honest with yourself and tell yourself, yeah, don't get me wrong, I progressed. But if I'm sacrificing form to allow me to progress, then I'm not really being a bodybuilder here. I'm just moving weight from A to B. And even with these chest supported rows that you see right now, they're not the prettiest chest supported rows you'll ever see. Um, and I'm a little bit in in one mind, I'm thinking, well, George, I've made Tourette horrendous <laughs> i've made very good progress with my posterior chain and i appreciate everyone's comments in my recent video actually about that by doing this sort of form this sort of execution and, and moving sort of weight from a to b and i sit there and go why why change it you know why am i gonna all of a sudden drop the loading down and be pretty and brief fancy and all that sort of stuff when I'd be making great progress just by moving weight from A to B. So it's a little bit, yeah, a little bit up and down with this sort of chest supported row. I, I love it. It's one of my favorite back pieces. And if you have this sort of prime chest supported row, then I, I definitely would recommend it. But at the same time, I'm thinking, oh, I could clean that up a little bit, make that look tidier. But I've made good results from it. So it's a little bit, ugh, I don't know. <laughs> See how my head works sometimes. It's fucked. Then I did the D-handle pull down, absolute favorite. This is ex this exercise, especially over the past like couple of months now, has just become a trend. I think everyone's hopped on it. I've even hopped on it. I'll happily admit that. I don't give a fuck. I f it feels great. Um, like I said in, in the previous video, really trying to think about keeping that elbow as close to me as I can. Um, staying within my range of motion, so I'm not overextending at the top that you see a lot of people do. You notice I'm staying at kind of my natural arm length, which is quite short. I really think about driving that elbow down um, and into the, the sort of base of my spine. Now, an exercise which people, by the looks of it on my Instagram poll, I put a poll up saying, do you rate the, the dumbbell pullover? A lot of people said they thought it was meh. I think 89% of people thought it was a meh exercise and 11% uh, of people liked it. 
I don't know. It's, 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 a, it's a hard one to say because how I'm feeling this morning, like my lats from doing this, I'm absolutely fucked. Absolutely written off. My lats are tight. So I definitely know these have contributed towards that. However, when you look at the actual resistance profile of the um, dumbbell pullover and if you look at kind of how it, how you move, like the drop off of the dumbbell, like when I get to here, like there's really no tension on my lats at all. There is obviously tension, but it's not the greatest. And I could probably do a different exercise or a better exercise to stimulate my lats. But there's something about these dumbbell pullovers, guys. When I tell you I'm not fucking doing it for no reason and just trying to look fancy, there's something about them that I thoroughly enjoy. And like I said, I woke up this morning and anecdotally, like I'm fucking sore. So something has obviously happened there, you know? So despite people saying you shouldn't be doing this exercise, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be that. Like if it feels good for you, if you enjoy doing it, if it's an exercise that you connect, whatever it is, then fucking do it. It was quite funny. I was doing the reverse flies and this guy next to me asked me how, how long I've got left. And he literally just stood there and just watched me whilst doing my set. And I was thinking, that is so off-putting. I was going to say, fuck off, mate. You know, go do one. Do something else for five minutes and I'll call you over when I'm done. You know, that, that, that sort of person. Obviously, I can understand you're standing there to reserve the spot. But at the same time, it's like, fucking come on, man. This is one of my favorite exercises for my biceps. My biceps are fucked after doing this exercise. Bench at a set at like a mid incline, higher incline. And I just really think about just leaving the ego at the door. Like you don't need, I think these are 12 and a half kilo dumbbells. You don't need crazy amounts of weight. And I'm just here controlling it. And oh my God, my biceps today, guys, as well. Woo, 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 woo. Don't know why I did that. Um, and then I did some reverse curls. I just thought, why not just do some reverse curls? So I don't really train like four arms or do any sort of reverse curls. So I thought, I'll give it a go. Why not? And uh, yeah, shockingly today, my forearms are fucked. So that was probably a bad move. No wanking for Georgie Boy for the next couple of days. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's voiceover. If you are still watching the video 21 minutes deep into it, then I love you guys lots. And uh, I'll see you in the next clip, motherfuckers. So if you've watched today's video, comment down below, Diesel. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Yeah, I thought I was going to get aired off then. All right, now you're kind of licking my ear. I kind of like when he licks my ear because he gets all the wax out. Ooh. Okay, right, this is a bit weird then. You're just here watching me getting fucking tongued by Diesel. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have, drop a like, subscribe if you're new around here. And me and Diesel, should we see him in the next one? You want to feature in the next one, do you? <laughs> Am I going to leave it on that, really? Okay, we're going to leave it on that. Alright, lots of love guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm a London scammer, I see it, I want it, I click it, and that's in the band old pirates whipping. Let's stay in my started clicking. No boo, I'm waitress tipping. Bad B, come and take this dinking. Holding, that's what I'm sipping. Money, that's what I'm missing. Look, I'm a London scammer, I see it, I want it, I click it, and that's in the band old pirates whipping. The steam and started clicking. No boo, I'm waitress tipping. But B, come and take this dinking. Cold Dean, that's why I'm sipping.